my overall assessment of sauna based on the literature is the mechanisms are fascinating and I like physiology. Um, I think it is probably, it probably has modest positive health benefits related to cardiometabolic health and cardiovascular health. I certainly don't view it as a replacement for exercise or physical activity. I think it's almost like, hey, it's better than nothing, but not as good as, you know, more traditional forms of exercise to benefit cardiometabolic outcomes and cardiovascular outcomes. Uh, I think if you're someone with a low cardiorespiratory fitness level, who's at high cardiometabolic health risk at baseline, you might have to some extent an additive effect of doing a little bit more exercise and a little bit of sauna in the mix. Um, but as you start to get to a higher fitness level, I think it's more likely that those health related benefits of sauna become increasingly modest and potentially at some point, even a little bit redundant in the context of someone who is at a really high fitness level. Uh, so in, in summary, I think what you would expect with sauna is neutral, neutral to modestly positive health outcomes. Um, but, but it's certainly not a replacement. I mean, one of the things that I mentioned is a critical distinction is, you know, you do get some of these, uh, indicators that's like, oh, sauna does this exercise also does that. But the fact that you have an increase in cardiac output without an increase in stroke volume, the increase in stroke volume is a really major driver of a lot of the positive cardiovascular adaptations that we make to aerobic type exercise. So yeah, it's not like a full exercise replacement, but like I said, probably better than nothing. And one of the things I find most fascinating about it, uh, as I do it myself, uh, I was reading a great review paper about um, exercise and appetite. And they were suggesting in that review paper that the increase in body heat that we experience during exercise might play a causative role in suppressing appetite after exercise acutely. Uh, and it was, it was hypothetical. It was speculative. Uh, it was not something that I would take to the bank. But I have noticed that when I do sauna, uh, it does seem to transiently blunt my appetite to some extent which I think is really fascinating. It's something I've noticed with sauna, but I don't particularly notice with exercise, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, you know, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff related to sauna, and I'm hoping that we'll get more randomized controlled trials to kind of dig into some of these mechanisms. But I will say an important thing to keep in mind is that saunas are hot and heat stress is a serious phys physiological stressor. So if you have any kind of, uh, you know, noteworthy or relevant, uh, medical condition, you'll want to make sure that you consult with a, prof a medical professional to make sure that it is safe for you to engage in extended periods of time in this level of heat stress, because it can be quite serious. You know, I'm curious, the, the body heat and appetite thing. I, I would want to read that paper. What occurs to me, because like I also don't want to eat after after I get really hot, but it's just because I'm sweaty and I don't want to eat when I'm sweaty because I feel like I just feel slimy and yeah. I, I feel like I'm just going to get sweat and muck all over everything that I'm eating. And so I'll, like, uh... I, I don't know. I, I, wonder, I wonder if you can manip like completely shut down sweat but uh, still make people hot if you would see if you would see the same impact. Well, good luck running that study. I'm sure the IRB would love that. We're gonna oh, yeah, introduce we, heat stress and then remove the, the human mechanism to actually dissipate heat. Yeah, just just figure out how quickly the subjects in that study can learn how to pant. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll put that that review in the show notes that was talking more about. Um, you know, exercise and heat and appetite. That wasn't the main focus of the paper. It was one subsection. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in the show notes and I'll send it to you after the show and you can take a look at it. Maybe we'll revisit on the show later. Like I said, that that to me is something I was like, oh, that's an interesting thing. I do the sauna because I like it, but I have noticed that I do have some, some notable appetite suppression for a couple hours afterward. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not in a calorie deficit. Um, I'm just at maintenance level. So 
uh, it's very possible that once you get into a deficit, it's just like, whatever, you're still hungry. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it, it is interesting. Like if there's one thing you learn from bodybuilding, it's that a severe calorie deficit combined with low body fat can cut through damn near anything. Like, yeah. Well, I, so after like, yeah, after a hard workout in the heat, after I go play basketball, whatever, I do want to consume calories, like s just some sort of like calorific beverage. Yeah. But I don't want to put food in my mouth. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, f I feel like, I feel like I am experiencing, experiencing physiological hunger, but I just feel gross if I eat while I'm very sweaty. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, maybe revisit that, but at, at the bare minimum, I'll put that link in the show notes and people can uh, engage in the controversy and form their own opinion. Sounds um, good. But yeah, so sauna, uh, like I said, neutral to modestly positive health benefits. I think it's uh, a lovely cultural practice. I think it's very fun and cool. There seems to be a social element in certain countries that that is, you know, really cool. Like I kind of wish we had it here. Uh, and I love doing sauna because I think it feels great. And like I said, yeah, maybe you get some minor health benefits from it. Maybe not. But as long as there's no contraindication, as long as you don't have a relevant medical issue that would prevent you from using sauna, you know, I, I certainly see no reason to uh, restrict yourself from doing something that can be very enjoyable, very relaxing, 